I am Buddy Cosplay and welcome down to, let's just start the whole thing over, Cosplay and in this video we're going to show you how to make a helmet. Let's try that one more time. Hello all you beautiful people out there in the internet and on YouTube and everywhere else in the world. I am Buddy Cosplay and welcome down to the Cosplay Lab. In this video we're going to talk about helmets. I'm going to show you how to build this one using some templates that I will provide in the description down below. So make sure before you leave to download those templates and print them out. They should be scaled for 23 inch diameter I think. Every size head. Fits me pretty well but you can make it a little bigger or a little smaller if you need to. So we're just going to show you how to use the template and to uh, put a helmet together. So let's get started. Alright you should have printed out four pages which you'll have if I can get a hold of them these two pages which will combine to make one piece as you can see there's a dotted line on it that is a, an alignment mark where you can take these two pieces and align it to make one larger pattern and the same thing with the center sections has an alignment mark uh, you can actually line up the L2 as well it says L2 right there so this is the left side of our patterns and we're just going to Go ahead and get those started. So I'm going to trim one of these dotted lines off so the next one will butt up right against it. Now that I can see well, I can line it up. And now we're just going to cut those out. I know these aren't the prettiest patterns in the world, but this is one of the first times I used Inkscape to create my own patterns. So bear with me, they're not beautiful, but they definitely get the job done. I'm going to do the same thing with this pattern. All right, now how these patterns work is this is the left side, it's labeled left. And if you want the right side, you just flip it over and then it'll give you the right side. So you'll need a left and a right of this piece. <clears throat> and in addition, this is the left side, hidden under the tape there, but it's the left side. So you need one of these for left, flip it over to get the right. I've also marked the back of the head, so this will be the back part of the helmet and then the face side, this will be the front. So that's how you know how these things will line up. This will be to the front, this will be to the back. I've also added some hash marks, which are these squiggly lines. Again, not perfectly drawn, but uh, I'm not a graphic artist, but they all serve the purpose of what they're supposed to do here. And it'll go all the way around just like that. Now when putting templates on the foam, I prefer to have a little thing of push pins. Especially with thin paper like this, it'll tend to slide around on you while you're trying to trace around it. So I just like to use these to pin them down into place. And makes that just makes it a little easier for everything to be held down while you're tracing. Get me out of Sharpie. And we're just going to trace around. And you also want to remember to put your hash marks. Some people prefer to cut them out of the template. And then you can just use your marker to um, you know, make the line. But I'd put a, a little line outside of where, well, you can see. I extend it on my foam. And then when I move this, I can just go in with it, match it up. So now I've got my hash marks on the inside. 
It's a little easier for me than it is cutting out all these little things. Now the only problem with that is they're harder to see on this side. But as I went over them, you can see little lines here. A line there, so on and so forth. So you can actually see the lines through the paper. Don't forget to mark your things. This is the left, and this will be the right. I'll try to keep as much foam in use as possible without wasting any. We have the right side. Let's enter hash marks in. So if we don't move those hash marks in when we cut this foam off, we're going to cut the hash mark right off with it. Now this is pretty thick foam. You can use smaller foam such as five or three millimeter foam, five millimeter foam, whatever you need to use um, if you want it to be thinner and easier to manage. But just for the generic template that we're making here, we're just going to use regular um, floor mat foam that you pick up at Harbor Freight or at Amazon. Of course I'll link to the foam and everything else in the description below and the details of the YouTube video. Left side, bring my hash marks in. Now the good thing about having a generic template for a helmet like this is it's great for a base. It doesn't have to be specifically, oh, I'm going to make the helmet from Skyrim and I need that pattern. You can often take a base template like this and use that as a foundation and build upon it. So once you have a good foundation type helmet like this that fits you well, um, don't be afraid to use it over and over again to you know, expand uh, your helmet arsenal by you know, using that as your base template for other builds. I almost said some of that in English. Maybe not, but some of it. I'm just holding this up to the light because when you do that, just like anything else, you can see through it. And once you can see through it, you can find those hash marks. And I'm transferring them to the back. If I knew a way of doing that in Inkscape, I would have done so. But now that they're transferred, I can just get the ones I've missed. Just like that. Now it is time to cut out our helmet. Save your templates. I like to cut mine so I'm working in segments. That way you don't have so much of this board to uh, mess with, you know, on your table. Now remember when you're cutting, you always want to have a good perpendicular cut. You don't want to be left and right unless that's your intention. You want to bevel, but we don't, so we're just going to cut straight. Nice, smooth, continuous lines. Now, a lot of people worry that they're, when they do a pattern that they, the two pieces will not be identical. And they won't be identical. It's just that simple. This is a left and a right piece, but if you were to try to match them up, you will see that there is some discrepancies. It's a little thicker here. If I flip around, it's a little thicker on this side. It's not a huge deal with foam because it's pretty forgiving. You can stretch and mold and push uh, to make things fit better. But if you are that worried about it, once you have one cut out, you can hold them together and really get in there and get those last little bits that are different. Try to make it more alike. I usually don't do that, but I just want to tell you that that's something sometimes people like to do. One thing I didn't do on my patterns, which I should have told you to do, which is not a big deal because we still have it here, is to mark the front and back. Front. These are fronts and back sides. So now we have a left and right piece, which will actually be like this and the front and back. So this will face the front and these will actually go together like this. 
Now we've got to cut out our face mask parts. Now when you have a curve going around this corner here, I prefer to have a little more blade out than I do when I'm cutting a straight line. That way you can kind of twist and bend this blade a little bit and it'll help make that curve smoother as you're cutting. You have the left side. Let me just repeat that for the right. Alright, we've got our front left and right pieces and our top left and right pieces. And basically, they are going to match up much like this. The front is going to go towards the front of the mask and it will curve around just like this. Which seems like it would be difficult to do right now, which it is, so we're going to have to heat form these just a little bit. So, to start out, we'll heat form these guys. And we know that they are going to curve in towards these hash marks, so we're going to bevel it, or sorry, bend it, or contour it in a direction like this. Because we want this to bend towards our helmet and towards the other piece. So that's how we're going to bend these. I prefer to use my hands just to give it a curve. Some people prefer other methods. But I like the idea of doing this because you can kind of stretch it a little bit. As you're curving. <clears throat> Give a little extra shape that way. All right. So now that we've messed with that while it was cooling down, it's pretty much retained the shape that we're giving it, which is a nice little curve. And now we have both pieces curved with a slight bend and, and them going this way. That way they will connect a lot better to other things. Because they're going to connect here too. And that bend will help them match up. So now we're going to bend the face plates. And the biggest curves here are going to be right up in here. These two pieces are going to have to come together like this. So we need to make sure we get a good bend on it like that, curve the top and around the back. We could leave this open if we want, it really is up to you, but this is made basically to almost close um, in the front. You'll see as we go, but you can leave this open, you can actually cut it off, you can do all kinds of different things with this base template. Now the top part, we just want that to have enough of a curve that it's going to bend over enough to meet the other piece we're doing. And this front piece is kind of optional. So that's enough of a curve to make it workable for now. So we're going to do that to this piece and then we're just going to start gluing. The next stage of our helmet build is I added two layers of barge rubber cement which I have in a container but you can buy it in bulk or smaller containers. The stuff isn't real cheap um, and you don't want to smell it for long periods of time. It'll give you a headache. It could make you sick. You could use hot glue for this, but I wouldn't really recommend it because with hot glue you'll have to go just a little bit at a time, add some more hot glue, a little more at a time, add some more hot glue, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's cheaper to do hot glue, but I don't re really recommend it because if you apply heat after the fact, that glue could pull apart. This won't do that quite as much. So now we've got our four pieces. They've been formed a little bit. And we've got our left and right center pieces. Front, front, back, back, left and right. So the back, these center pieces are going to connect. So I'm going to get them started right here. Now the best way to do a seam is if you have a flat area like this is to hold it down and let that flat edge 
make everything line up better on the other side. That way you won't have as much work to do later because the less work you have to do here, uh, the less time it's going to take you to finish your build. So we're just going to complete that using the table as our flat surface. As you can see, as I'm sticking it, it's starting to curve up back here. And that's the beauty of foam. And there was no hash marks in the center. I didn't put any in there just because it wasn't as important to get it to line up. And we have the right side right here, which we're going to line up. Can't really use the table for this part because we really have to kind of bend and shape and pull. And we're going to bend, shape, and pull to make sure these hash marks line up. All, this, all the while, we're making sure that this surface and this surface are as close to flush as possible. Which can be very difficult to do at times. Especially when it starts touching up here and sticking. And I forgot to tell you about these pieces. These pieces, this dart we cut out, needs to be done first. As you can see, I did not do a good job of winding that up, and now there's a big lip. I can hit that with a sander, it's not a big issue, but the better you do these in advance when you're uh, connecting them, the less problems you're going to have later. And I probably wouldn't have had such a problem if I would have done this first, but I didn't do that. See, now that one I did ahead of time, and it's much better. So we're going to continue on, making sure we're lining up these hash marks as well as we can. You will have to pull back on the foam like this sometimes to really make those things line up. Like right here, they're starting to really become a difference in distance. So I'm really going to have to push one and pull the other. as I'm going. And if you do it well enough, the ends should meet up. We're going to continue that same process with this side. Now in a perfect world, everything would have touched perfectly and it would have been flush and you wouldn't have had any problems. But unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. So you may have to go back and pinch some pieces together and do the things you need to do to get them to touch. See how this is not quite there yet? but it won't always hold perfectly. Sometimes you'll have to go back and do a little extra work to it. But there's the basics of the helmet. You can use this template for all kinds of things. You can connect. This is not meant to have the front connected. It's meant to be open like this. But if you wanted the front connected, you could probably just do that or add an extra little piece in the center. Uh, but the template itself is this actual design, like this. So you could take this, you could add horns to it, you could do whatever you want, but this is a good base template to get you started building things. I use this same template for this World of Warcraft Guard Sentry Helmet. And don't be afraid that if you're trying to put these things together and they're not sticking well, use a little extra glue. Throw a little bit of super glue down in there and hold it together until it, it's, it's the way you want it. Um, just do what you need to do and, uh, you know, don't be afraid to experiment. Do a little more heat shaping. Could flare these out. You could do all kinds of crazy things. You can even just cut this off and just 
make it a regular helmet, for example. I'm not planning on using this same thing. So let's just say we wanted a generic helmet. Boom. Now we have the most generic helmet I've ever seen in my life. But you want to be a race car driver or something really cheesy, you could do that. You could, you could take some off the back. You could do whatever you need to do to uh, shape this to whatever your liking is. And this one fits my head pretty good. Uh, you can adjust that by adding a little more in the in the template or taking a little off and then make it tighter. So that's it. That's how you do a quick and simple helmet build. So there you go. You can use that template to create a helmet much like this with the face guard, add some detail, really make it pop and look nice. You can also use it as an alternative for any other kind of helmet build you want. I've got one over here that I was actually building in the video where I cut the sides off just to give you an idea of what you can do. This one, of course, is generic as all can be, but it just shows you that you could just use this as a base template for a helmet. Now, I just went through and threw some paint on it. I don't know why I put the orange in there, but it'll fit the same every time. You can add things to it. I have no idea if this will just experiment here. Old motorcycle visor. It'll work better without glasses. But you could add a visor to it, you could add horns to it, you can turn it into the Inquisitor's helmet. You could do basically anything you want with this basic template. So this is the exact same template, like I said, I used for this build. And I just changed it, cut the sides off, and painted a different color. Didn't add a lot of detail to this basic one, just to show you that you can do basically anything with these templates. So make sure you download it. The link will be down in the description below. And uh, happy crafting. Hey, thanks for watching, but before you run off to make your own awesome cosplay armor and props, click that subscribe button down below so you'll always be updated when new videos are released. Also, if you need more tips, tricks, and tutorials, you can stop by www.ccosplay.com for much more information and articles that are released on a regular basis. And last but not least, stay crafty.